Welcome to Oneness Pod. I'm your host, Zach Long. I'm your other host, Kelly Warner. So we're here today to talk about Japanese horror movies, and we're going to be here other days too. That's kind of what a podcast is. Mm -hmm. It's a commitment to watch a bunch of horror movies, or at least this podcast is a commitment to watch a bunch of horror movies. Yeah, that, that's kind of our thing. Right? We were kind of good at that part. Maybe not so much the talking part. We'll yeah, see about no, that as it, this goes on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. But we can definitely watch the shit out of some movies. That is true. And we're both big fans of the Japanese horror movies. Um, I mean, as creatives, I know that you are heavily inspired by Japanese art. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I am as well. So mm -hmm. uh, we're not experts on it in any way. No, just passionate fans that and that have kind of taken some of that fandom and recreate uh, repurposed it for our own work. You know, so yeah. And we are going to we are going to fuck up uh, on some <laughs> things. We are stupid Westerners. We do it with only good intentions. Promise. But we will say some names wrong, and we apologize. Getting that out of the way now. You say good intentions, but wait until we get to the episode of about addition, and we realize, like, oh shit, that's just you, Zach. <laughs> ah, damn it! <laughs> Disappointment. But we're not there yet. No. Today we're going to talk about a different Takashi Miike movie. One missed call. Why is it episode one? Because we stole the namesake for our pod because it sounded cool. It did. I mean, it sounded a lot better than the Japanese horror podcast. So, yeah, I mean, that might have gotten more listeners, but fuck them. No, wait, no, we love our listeners. Stay. Yeah, no, yeah, but no, no, that would have gotten other listeners. So, still, fuck those ones. Mm. Uh, ours are fantastic, though. If you're listening, you're you're on the right side of history. <laughs> now if you if you heard the intro there's that's a lot that's a lot of sounds that come out of modern japanese horror specifically and that you have the ringtone sound which is i mean phones are very big in japanese horror in the early 2000s you have the you know, like a grudgy sort of sound and you have a uh, static that evokes technology all these really speak about films that Today's film, One Missed Call, touches on to at least some degree why that those films are definitely going to be big touchstones and films that we have to talk about. <laughs> uh -huh. We're not just going to use this show to cover that period. Other smarter people have covered these movies before. Yeah. We're not going to just talk about the J-horror craze uh, of the late 90s, uh, early well, 2000s. we are. We are. We're just not going to just talk about it. We're going to talk about it less. Yes. I want to talk about some malformed men, and I want to talk about some 1940s ghost stories and get some short films in there and just... Mm. Really, some of the shot on video weirdness that was happening in the '90s. Just really kind of dive in there and just look at look at the, some of the greats. Look at some of the modern classics. Look at some downright trash, and look at some wonderful oddities. I think that, I mean, you have one planned that oh, yeah. is going to be weird as it can be. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do kind of want to introduce uh, our listeners to some movies, but we also just kind of want to, we also want to cover the bases too, I think, um, even though we probably won't get to everything. We we do want to do the greats, and we want to do the overlooked stuff. And uh, today, this is not overlooked, and I don't know how many people think that One Missed Call is one of the greats. I like it. I do. It's also, um, I think, one of the... It kind of came at the end of, uh, you know, the J horror cycle. I don't think it did. I don't think well, it did. I think well, it came at a point before between the fusion of two different cycles. Yeah, yeah. The um, the J horror boom kind of was starting to die out a little bit in Japan, and then Ring got remade by Hollywood, and then it was like, holy shit, these move that then that Ring Gore Verbinski's Ring was successful in Japan. And then Japan was like, Oh, these movies have an audience again. Let's make them again. And then some people were even making them to be remade. 
And One Miss Call seems to be a movie that I don't know if I want to call it self-aware, but it is. No, it's 100% self-aware. I, 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 will, I will, to a T, it is 100% self-aware. I am positive of that. I do want to actually, though, quickly jump back mm. and just address sure. an earlier point you made. Mm-hmm. Where when introducing, you said this wasn't overlooked. And I think that it's actually, I think that like it was big at the time. But I feel like it's been set aside and you hear like the grudge. And you- I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of been, uh, I mean, recently it got re- re-released uh, on uh, Blu-ray by Arrow Video. And that's going to help it uh, find some new audience or, or kind of be rediscovered. That's a really great release. Yeah, it is. It is a good uh, a trilogy set. Yeah, go get it. It's good. But we I are not in it. any way sponsored by No, Arrow. we are not in any way sponsored. Hey, Arrow, if you want to send me shit, go, go ahead. I mean, <laughs> you know. um, but I would agree with you that it, it kind of has, compared to Rings and Grudges and all the others, it kind of has faded a little bit to the background. Not totally forgotten, but, you know, faded a bit. And I think that's a damn shame because I think it's very cool close to being a masterpiece this movie is good it's act like i i remember watching it when i was younger because Mm -hmm. i i I got into anime and that's what got me into j horror and uh one miss call would have been one of my earliest touchstones into that one miss call ring you juan uh what was the other one infection Mm. infection's great we have to talk about infection yeah we will yeah yeah but I got in and I watched this, but in my memory, a lot of it, a lot of it just kind of disappeared. Now, of course, there's one scene which is was just like in there because it's amazing. But it turns out that like a lot of the rest of the film is amazing too. Uh-huh. But then the remake came <laughs> out, and the remake played on the f- the movie channels on cable for a long time mm. and like if you got nothing else to do because you're a fucking dumb high school kid and there's a horror movie on tv you put the horror movie on tv and so i probably watched the remake a whole bunch because i and i saw it really? in the theaters too more than one yeah so like i saw it for the first time this year and i had to be high to do it i'm talking dozens my God, you poor boy! I I know. Listen, listen, mate. There's it's no surprise I'm a fucking masochist <laughs> with what I heard. But but I watched it so much that like m- what I remembered turned out to be more from that than it was from this movie. Uh. And of course, since then my uh, my relationship with Mike has evolved. So watching it has a, has a completely different feel. I, I would agree with that too. I don't. I think I saw it on late night uh, TV once, uh, and the first time, and I saw it then just as a fan of Japanese horror. Watching it again uh, the other day, I watched it as a Takashi Miike fan, and so I do feel like there was different things to appreciate or think about in in terms of how it fits into his filmography. One of the things I really like about this movie and why I think it's kind of special is holy crap the use of sound is amazing in this movie um like there's certain Mm. scenes like just the opening i think it's the opening scene the in in the restaurant where shit goes uh quiet silent Mm. and it's like okay you know and there's other scenes where it's just you know mike is the director just is he knows what he's doing. He's already thinking ahead to the post-production and, and the editing and the stuff. Whereas you watch other horror movies and it's clear they don't think that far ahead. They're thinking, just throw this together and we'll figure it out later on. This movie seems so meticulous in its scares and its uh, ability to build dread. And I think that's something that's kind of, Mike's not really always known for. He's known for the shock and the gore and, Ichi the killer and, and stuff. And uh, this one, I think, kind of had a, a different side of Mike, the horror filmmaker. Uh, you know, a little bit quieter, a little bit, you know, uh, a little bit more patient. Not to say that things don't get weird. There's a lot of CGI in the movie, a lot of 
strange death scenes, but um, I don't know. I kind of was impressed by the movie uh, in that it was willing to be quiet now and then. I think that I think that we see that a lot more in Japanese movies than mm. we do in Western horror. Western horror, as of late, has a particular overabundance of sort of loud, sort of wow, sort sort yeah. of uh, like Just... pounding, pulsating sounds that are supposed to like shock you when you're in the theater here uh-huh. and there. But it doesn't really work. It, it's it's very interesting. You you point out that the use of sound as a form of the or as a sign of the meticulous building of it, and that what I really noticed and was drawn to with this film, and I think afterwards we should talk about the plot and walk through that. Yeah, yeah. But what I was really drawn to was the way that Mike shoots in, the way the geography of everything looks. He, the use of space, especially those inside uh-huh. spaces, the home, uh-huh. the, the the studio. Uh, there, there's it's very clear early on. Um, so we we watched the remake in preparation. And yeah, I don't know if we should have done it first. Or it after, but... it, it, we we should have done it first because <laughs> can you imagine trying to do that after and then watching the sequels at, like. We we did it in the right order, <laughs> uh, because we had to punish ourselves. But when you watch the remake, there's a lot of moments where they're recreating scene by scene, uh-huh, uh-huh. and they don't use the space well. No, and then like there is a, there's there's the only good thing about the remake is that uh, Mr. Twin Peaks shows up. Yes. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Mr. Twin Peaks shows up and he does amazing, amazing acting in this movie. He does. You get, you take, you give, you you take a working actor and you put them in on a set and they're going to work. Like, but that scene where they bring him in is, in this studio and it doesn't use it at all. And in Mike's uh, like the original, you, you have the studio, but you also have like, they're in a real studio and there's a real like stage and all the camera setups and everything. They, they, they just, they use that wonderfully. They use the tight spaces wonderfully. It really understood how to use the location. And, and that is something I'd also, I see a lot in, uh, Japanese horror movies is mm-hmm. like they're very focused on that. I do think that the remake has one better scene, and it is Robert Wise. Um, it's it's oh, his first. Yes, it's his yes, first I scene. agree. I agree. I you agree? Right now. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. One hundred percent. It's one. You you you're going to say it's when Robert Wise shows up to convince her to to do the TV show to, to do his the TV show, and he hands mm-hmm. her the cell phone and everything. Yeah. No, and, that one shot. Hands- like hands her one a, a, a brand new phone and then immediately she starts getting the ringtone and and he's just looks down at it and then looks up as the door closes on his face and it's like that's just a good scene that's a good scene yeah. and in the original film that scene is played so much differently it's actually a lot louder which is interesting considering we're talking about uh sound uh and how this the original is actually a quieter movie um but it's it has like the producer and his staff with cameras and microphones all ambushing the girl like in a, a dozen hallway. people. Yeah, and just shoving a camera in her face, and and then you got the it same. It's more predatory, though. I do appreciate that. Sure. Like, like because when you send Robert, I see Mister Twin Peaks, and even though he killed his daughter, I want to give him a hug. <laughs> but that that's one scene where I was like, hey, this is actually a decent scene. Yeah. The rest of it's shit. <laughs> it, they, they had he he's the main guy. They were for that scene. They weren't mm-hmm. going to be like no matter what they did, they couldn't fuck it up. <laughs> I mean, they had uh, you know Edward Burns and Shannon Sossaman and all the other stuff, and it's just most of the rest of the remake. Edward really Burns is terrible in that. He's so angry to be there. It's so funny. We're, we have plenty plenty to deal with them. 
Kelly, why don't you walk us through the plot for this, and then we can we can we'll go through it. As in order as we can. <laughs> All right. So, um, one missed call is, um, like a lot of Japanese horror films of the last uh, decade, about a, a curse that passes from one person to the next. Um, and this one, you get a ringtone. Uh, a, a one. Uh, you miss the call, and a voicemail is left on your phone, of from you from you. A call from you from the future, uh, the last things you say before you die, and and usually the scream. Yeah, usually like uh, the last words, and then a scream, and then it cuts to people looking at their phone like, "What the fuck?" Um, and so most people treat this like some bizarre prank, and then people die uh, exactly like the phone call said they would. Exactly when the phone calls, exactly how and when the phone call said they would, usually in some bizarre fashion. Um, and well, some- if, if, if it's the remake, it's not even a bizarre fashion. It's a Final Destination oh, it's, ripoff. It's so Final Destination. Yeah, I mean, it's it's Final Destination by any other name, pretty much. Um, in in the original, it's. Like you can sense the, or you can kind of see the ghost influencing the world, like uh, cutting wires in a fence that'll then, uh, you know, lead to someone falling. At one point, there's an interesting point where someone seems to know they've said their last words, and then the elevator doors open and there's an empty elevator shaft. Like you imagine that they would have said that and then stepped into it, but, and, you know, like, but he seems to be aware of what well, happened. He slowly looks up at it, and yeah, it's like a long, loving shot. And then he looks down, and like something is holding his leg. Yeah, some CGI ghost hands grab his legs and well, drag well, him well, down. No, no, well, no, no, it's not just CGI ghost. Hand. It, it is like it's not even a full hand. It's just like no, yeah. it's the. In- by presence of like something because it's invisible it's just something is like it could be a force it could be a hand like you don't know really what it is and so then uh as as this curse starts to affect uh all the friends in the in a certain circle um so, as it starts to affect all the friends in a certain circle the, the uh try to figure out what the fuck is causing this and solve the mystery. There's always a mystery. And, uh, well, let's with that then, cause that, that gives us the basic plot. Mm-hmm. Let's go through this then from the start. Cause we start in on the really nice scene. We've already mentioned it a little yeah, bit. In the restaurant. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're in this restaurant and we're, we're meeting a bunch of characters and we're not going to remember half of them, but that's mm-hmm. fine. The movie doesn't, isn't worried. We're we're focusing on one, and we're with her, and she she gets easily creeped out. It's clear, and she's got a problem. She we're, we're learning she's got a um, she has a phobia of peepholes. Mm-hmm. We're learning a few things. We get the that quiet moment, but then we go to the washroom, mm-hmm. and we have a very interesting moment where we get the like like we're talking literally the second scene, minutes into the film, we get that first call. Yeah, and uh, the the girls in the washroom are confused and a little bit alarmed, and they go back out to the restaurant and pass their phone around, and everyone, all the friends, are like, "Whoa, what the heck?" You know. Do you remember what she's saying? I don't. Rem- I don't remember my. Um, oh, I think I think she's. I think she says, "Um, oh no, it's starting to rain," and then yeah, spring. it's just it's just something. It's something and simple, not scary at all. It's just no. like. It, it's weird that you're hearing yourself say this, mm-hmm. but it's like, this is a weird glitch. Oh, this is disturbing. Yeah. And so then what we, what happens is the girl that got that phone call, you know, uh, a couple days later, she is out on a walk on the phone with one of her girlfriends and, uh, our main character she, turns out. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, is on the phone and says, Oh no, it's starting to rain. And then she, uh, falls to her death. And um, she does not fall to her death. Okay, okay, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly. She gets hit by a 
freaking train. She falls onto a train. The train kills her. I don't. I think. I think the fall was okay. I think. Okay. It, I think it's the train that did the killing. That, it's like I'm fighting my with the, this, my uh, anti-spoiler, you know, tendencies. Oh no no no! We're we're we're, we're going through this with a fine tooth comb and that like it's All like right, that. Fine, fuck like, it. Like, it's a from space balls. So she she fucking gets claimed by a train and her arm gets cut off and then the arm is in the dirt holding no, 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 the okay, phone. Now you're going too fast. Fucking... We gotta break. The, we, gotta, we gotta talk about the scene and that. So no, our I'm... our our girl is on. Our lead character is on the phone with her, and she's just like like they've been in class together and in class. She was saying, like, hey, aren't you worried? Like, this shit's going down tonight. Like, you had that call. Like, she's being sensible about it. And the other girl is just happy because she's flirting with this new guy. Yeah. So when she calls at night, like, it's the friend who's on the phone that's worried. And this girl's Uh oblivious. And she's walking across, like, a train. She's going over a train track. So it's like this. Uh, uh, A bridge. A bridge. uh, Elevated, like, walkway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we start like getting close ups of the fence, just like breaking. Yeah. And we're not really sure what it is. And then suddenly like, she just fucking gets grabbed and thrown through it as a fucking train is coming and smacks her. The, the, the remake does do it better, but it also is kind of almost like a comedy shot. It kind of, it's a little bit goofy looking, but at the same time, it's uh, at least, sticks with you longer it's because it's like oh shit it did that i the original handles the arm much better though, oh yeah it's such a long so, so low zoom out so as we basically you know we know that she got fucked up by that train um we see her arm her severed arm uh in the gravel next to the tracks holding her cell phone and then <laughs> the severed arms uh dials the next number and thus the curse is forwarded to the next person and that's basically how the, the movie person, works. It, 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 that's how it works for the first half. The movie stops doing that. Yeah. Because, like, the, so the next person, we don't know who got called, and then our main character meets up with the guy who, who dies by the elevator shaft. Mm-hmm. And the cool part about that death is when the open sh- when he gets pulled to the shaft – like a second, like the doors close, and then a second later they reopen, and it, it's a, the elevator's there. It's normal, yeah, so there's yeah. no way like that he could have actually people. gotten right. away. Right? Yeah. And then we see at the, the bottom of the shaft, the dude is down there, all crippled, and broken, and bleeding, and he calls the next number. Yep. And so that one gets us to this girl. We have a scare scene. Let's build tension where we don't know if it's. Uh, our main character or her, the, either her roommate or the girl she's staying with. I don't remember what's happening at that point. Um, it, it didn't do a good job establishing that part, that, the, that facial it, relationship. There's a few uh, things that it, do, it kind of, it does kind of skim over like, uh, hell the leading man. It doesn't really matter though. No, you, you, you're able to follow it, you know, and that's what matters the most. There's a couple scenes that we have in which, like uh, characters are mourning over the deaths, and mm. there's this character that we see there at times. Then we have this scene where yeah, a male know, character, a uh, male an character, older man, an older man. Yeah. well, like forties, oh, yeah, yeah, older than this group, anyway. Yeah, because the group is like in their twenties. Yeah, college girls and stuff. But so this guy, this guy is there at the, these few events, but nobody talks to him. Then we find out that the girl's roommate or friend gets cursed, and we have the the TV crew comes and convinces her that like they have a exorcist who's going to protect her, and yeah. so they want to film and put like put her on TV and film them saving her, which sug- suggests that uh, this uh, cell phone curse is getting out there in the world that people are hearing about this. Yeah, so what, what is also int- – well, that's actually one of the parts that's m- one of my favorite scenes early on. And there's a couple moments I really love in this movie. But one of my favorites is, like, the way that they learn about it, the curse, is they just end up talking to some schoolgirls on the street because they're just mm-hmm. – they overhear them talking about it. And they just run up and go, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, like, it's very popular. 
And uh, so as the friend is taken to go do that, our lead girl meets this older man who it turns out to be a detective. I don't think he was. I think he was a, um, fuck, what was it? Well, he quits later on. Well, yeah, but I thought he was a mortician. I thought no, he was no, 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 no. Mr. Mortician. I th- I don't I thought he was the detective because he calls and quits later on. All right, and- it, he basically plays a detective role, so it's easy enough to. Uh, in either way, he, he works he for is, the city. Yeah, he, <laughs> I know he's a detective in the remake, and too, yes, he is but, in the remake. But yeah, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. What the point is that he is trying, like he is investigating deaths of this curse, and him and the girl go off and start the most boringest part of the movie. <laughs> Which is basically they uh, they try to you know figure out the mystery what is causing this curse and and in this we kind of get some uh, we we start to learn a little bit about um, a little girl and uh, and a tale of abuse and fingers start being pointed at a mother and so they try to find a hospital records and all that sort of stuff and of course this this uh circles back to our leading lady's um fear of peepholes which is related to her childhood abuse and so there's a a, a sub a, um a theme of abuse of children that that kind of runs through the movie you don't see a lot of it but it's there and um yeah it was- it's very important to note that the part of the mystery with this mother is you had a mo- she was a mother of two, one mm-hmm. of which would constantly get hurt, and one of her children one of her children has passed away, and she has been missing ever since this fire had happened. Right, the mother is so missing, like, yeah. and so the the child that would always get hurt it is still around and but she yeah, doesn't speak because it, she went through some really serious shit mm-hmm. and so that mystery happens for a while and you learn these and none of it is very interesting it's fine it feels like a necessary part or, or i don't know if necessary is the right word but i think that necessary is exactly the right word, though, because it, it I think it's like it just fits with the J horror uh, expectations of the time. Well, the first her- the first half of this and the Arrow, the booklet that comes with the Arrow uh, release definitely speaks about this. The first half hits all of those touchstones. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like, there's so like much ring and and grudge stuff in there, and dark water as well. Oh, like dark water, they're, they're, yeah. I think I think that you need to have that investigation part. Mm-hmm. I think that the Mike the part, the fact that it's Mike comes with how confused it gets later. Yeah, there there's some uh, stuff that I'm going to be honest, I don't totally understand in this movie, but I think that's okay because it keeps with the tone for the most part. Well, maybe not the final shot, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. And so the 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 roommate, the best friend of our leading lady, she gets put on TV. Uh, can can we take one moment? To, uh, sure. Can you what what was different about her her call? Oh, oh, the 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 friend she saw a video instead of instead of just a phone call like a just hearing her voice she saw her own face, uh, like in a short little video clip and in the background of the video clip is an arm that looks a little bit mysterious and creepy. As time gets closer and closer, though, it starts to become a face that, like, yeah, the, the arm like, starts moving out of there, and you know, it starts like a person appears, like, yeah. very, um, like grudge coming down the stairs, yeah, or a little bit, a little bit pulse like, too, you know, yeah, yeah, but yeah, so this is this was this scene is I love it, I love this scene, the TV scene. Yeah, so we, our characters, the the main investigation couple, they they show up and they are trying to get in and they can't get yeah, in. They want and on they, the set. They are in, but they can't do anything. Mm-hmm. But the exorcist like like comes out after this big show and is doing this thing and looks really fancy and cool. 
And then we cut to our characters who are doing whatever, and they're kind of watching. It's blah. Mm -hmm. It's very cool because instead of like things, uh, like like things go down in a second when it finally happens. Mm -hmm. But right before it does, the the Exorcist is given this big speech after the commercial break, of course. (laughs) Yes, yes. They talk about a commercial break. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they had to make money off it, and that's what. Yeah, the and I love that they have these. They they have these um, experts on the show also to to debate whether or not this is a real thing. Meanwhile, our our best friend character, who's watching her clock tick down, is freaking the oh, fuck oh, oh, out. Oh, 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 that's that's where I. Yeah, I'm 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 getting my favorite moment is in the whole film. We're almost there. Uh, what, one 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 thing to note though is that this whole screening is also happening like it's being shot and streamed live and there's even they they've taken over one of the monitors in like the center of tokyo yeah yeah so this is that's one of the things that kind of sets us apart from other j horror movies where it's like the the house and the grudge just go don't go near that house and you'll never know this shit happened and this Everyone in Tokyo is going to know this thing happened. Everybody in the world will know. Yeah. Tokyo immediately. The world, you know, later. But yeah. So we come back after the commercial break and he is telling her this very intriguing story. He's saying Uh that he knew that he would meet her. He had seen her in a dream and he had met her then. And this is the second time he's met her. So this is, he's been preparing for this. And for the only moment in the film that we do it, we go, we, we hear her thoughts. Her, it doesn't happen to any other the character, but we hear her thoughts. And she goes, I'm fucking screwed. <laughs> like, she's just, like, like she, she knows. But then he, he the, the exorcist turns around to go and like kind of struts away to do something. And then suddenly goes flying through the air because yeah, yeah. it's time. Yep. The clock click tick zero and uh the ghost shows up and that exorcist is not up to well, the it, never, it never the exorcist never comes ne- we never see him again after he gets thrown away no, no. We, we do we do have a really cool scene a really cool moment after this as we're sort of as in the edit kind of towards the next uh scene there might be one between them but there's like oh there's just one shot of the producer who uh, get her there and yeah. confronted her. There's just one shot of them like, what? Not the morning, but like, like yeah, that a, a sort of a last house on the left shot. Mm. So yeah, she falls on the ground. We have a scare. We have the scare with the wall and the, the death. You gotta walk us through this. <laughs> this seems like your scene. You you go through it. I. I... You seem to. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, you know what? Since you twisted my arm. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happens in this scene is that. So, so, so our really care some arm, this death by arm. And that's not, that's no joke. So we have the girl, she falls onto the ground and that's where we get, it's the TV camera that would have been filming. Mm-hmm. And it's showing her, and behind her is the figure coming out. And our main character comes in and looks at her, and it's like, "What?" And then looks at the camera and screams because you could see it on that. So that's what's being filmed out and sent mm-hmm. out to the world. Why? That's insane. Mm-hmm. And then, like, they're like, "Okay, well, fucking come with us." And they each, her and the detective, they grab her by the arms and pull her up, and then suddenly. She just like twists violently and tosses them both off and her body and hands start to twist and contort and wrap around and snap and pop as it like just unnaturally, even though it's all broken in a thousand places, it's still like unnaturally taut at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's literally like a f- noose and that the arm just wraps around her neck and fucking squeezes her head off essentially. Yeah, it pops and, her like, off. It, it pops off like we're seeing it and like we don't see it pop off we see we we see it just out of frame there it pops off and then we cut to a beautiful low shot in which the head hits a hits near the camera and the body falls so it manages to both be extremely graphic but not actually show you a lot of graphic right, yeah. uh, i would agree yeah that and it's which is very very interesting when you consider the what Mike did with mm-hmm. audition and what Mike did with 
Itchy the Killer and what Mike did with literally his career. I think he was trying to make a slightly more mainstream movie here. I mean, and I think he succeeded, but, uh, but yeah, I, I love that scene because it's so shocking and bizarre, but this it's, it's a little bit funny. I mean, it's a little bit funny. I love that scene. That's a good scene. It's, it's the centerpiece of the movie. Really? It reminds me a little, and I don't know why, but it reminds me a little like her body movements, the jerkiness of them. Mm. reminds me of the claymation uh girl deadite in evil dead 2 mm. yeah okay i don't yeah. know why that's weird but this this scene doesn't end there this scene ends when our lead character's phone starts to ring Yep, and now the curse has gone to our girl, and the clock is ticking for them to solve this mystery that they've started to investigate, or she's screwed. And um, Which and brings us into part two of the movie, though, which is interesting, because it took us a long time, not really, but it took this us not a actually bit a short to get movie. there. I mean, in well, a way... This is a two-hour movie. Yeah, this is, and it fits a lot of uh, stuff into that um, those two hours, but... um. The, it, it, the the weird part though is it fits most of it all like there the next chunk of it is pretty much all at hospital and mood for a long period yeah there um you know we kind of get a little bit more of the information about what caused this and i kind of want to i don't know do we want to go into all of that i kind of don't know that it matters well i don't i don't think I really don't think we need to go into it because a kind of a there's a mystery with the family and essentially what it comes down to is the dead girl is evil. Yeah, and the mom and, didn't do it. And but they have to find they have to go to the church to find or sorry, go to the hospital. I forget why, honestly. Uh, it was a little confused and she found out it was the hospital. Yeah, no, there are some confusing things. Uh, there, there was that. Oh, uh, no, 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 no! I remember that she mentioned. Okay, it was when they heard, when they found out about the hospital originally. They heard about the fire, so they thought it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. So she heard that she hears she heard that the hospital is still standing despite the fire. So she's like, "Oh, well, I'm going there." Yeah, so she, she goes there her because guy. she kind of goes off on her own. But we get into we get into a long period about a quarter of the film, honestly, which is her dealing with supernatural shenanigans in the hospital and there's an amazing amazing moment that really stood out to me mm. in which we have a ghost on the ceiling coming at her mm. and it's evocative of the 1950s ghosts it's evocative of a whole history of ghost stories because mm -hmm. of course it goes back all throughout the mythology but it's very it's a little bit twisted because it's standing on the ceiling and moving, but it, also its hair is not like it, it's still falling upwards. Uh -huh. And so it creates this very eerie sense, which I think exemplifies what I really love about Japanese horror movies. There's a sense that reality isn't the same. Hmm when horror is involved yeah i quite enjoy it and i think that is a fantastic moment i i really like the hospital sequence um until that point you know much, much of the movie was this haunted cell phone movie uh about curses and um how you're gonna die the hospital sequence basically sets that aside for a while and decides now it's a haunted house movie it really does. Like it, it, it feels a little bit like Sweet Home by Kurosawa, and it, yeah, it does. It does have a very like here is a haunted house movie, yeah. but it, and it ends like we figure out the we 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 stop it. Oh, we didn't stop it, which is yeah. a great moment. How, how many times in this movie, and for that matter, in all J horror, do they? stop the curse and then oh crap it turns out we didn't stop the curse now we stopped it well maybe not <laughs> and yeah uh, 
So they, they, they figure they stopped the curse. They figure they stopped the curse, realized they didn't stop the curse, figured out that they stopped the curse <laughs> again in like a five minute moan section. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but um, she, uh, they, they find. There's a really beautiful shot in that. Oh, there's a lot of beautiful shots in it. But uh, they find the corpse of the mother, and she's holding the original cell phone that's sending out this curse or whatever. So, uh, you know, and it looks like the mother's going to strangle our girl, and uh, it's freaky. And, and it's also a little bit of grotesque body horror as her decaying skin is coming off and everything. Yeah. But she's not a monster. She's a sad, pitiful thing that has finally been found and the curse can be... Well, returned. our detective disappeared at this part. Yeah, maybe sort of detective. <laughs> our, our, yeah, our, our maybe sort of detective disappeared at this part. And when that happened, we don't know, like, we see the the mother coming closer and closer to our mm-hmm. main character. But then we cut back to him uh, and he can come in and sees this really beautiful shot with the, her cradle and this dead body. Mm -hmm. But why he's locked out of the room, something very important happened. Yeah. So um, being locked out of the room is a theme that will run across all these movies. Um, (laughs) That's really what ties them together almost more than cell phones. Yeah, no, there's always someone in trouble and someone that can't get to them because a door is closed. Usually the ghost closed. Supernaturally it. closed. Oh yeah, just you know, supernatural locks and bolts. And um, so he's supernaturally locked out of the room where the the girl is with the dead mom. And uh, he turns around and sees the ghost of his sister, who was one of the original victims. Um, which is why he's so passionate. Maybe we should have mentioned that before. Why he's so passionate of, about this case because his sister was one of the original victims of the curse. And, and the, the sister shows up and she's all, she's a ghost, but a friendly looking ghost. And uh, basically. I didn't said, think she looked friendly. No. Well, compared to the rest of the movie. Yeah, but I don't trust ghosts. Period. Okay. Well, she basically says to her brother, uh, we, Something along the lines of how we each have a sky of our own. Now, that's an odd throwaway line that will become very important at the end of the movie that if you're not paying attention to, you won't fully get what the heck is happening at the end of the movie. And then even still, if you pay attention, you're still going to wonder what the heck just happened. I'm really excited to get into that because you know more about that than I do at this point. Not much more now that I just told you that. (laughs) Well, I already, I mean, I picked up on that the first time. Oh, I did. I thought, I he, he, I mean, he dies at the end, right? He get, he got his own sky. Kind of. I mean, okay, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. So anyway, so he, she comes back in. The mothers that the cops show up. The cops the who cops never believed are... any of this stuff before now basically have to admit. Okay, so well, they, have, they have to because of the, the TV. Well, it happened yeah. on the TV live. Yeah, yeah. Like, they had they had to. Which... Yeah, until then they were just blowing this off so disrespectfully. It was kind of amazing, but it makes it really disappointing when in the next movie they bring that up and then just drop it. Yeah, but um, that's that's uh, that's another nightmare waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. So. Our girl go, goes back home. Our detective finds out that it was not the mother that had uh, been abusive. It will because there was a there, they had a camera nanny cam. Oh, the, the, the dead body, the dead body of the mother had a, a cassette from the nanny cam. The cassette had the young girl dying, so it, it, the cassette captured one young girl uh, cutting the other young girl, and, but got caught by the mother. And then she started to have an asthma attack, and the mother took the, her injured daughter and left the evil one to die of an asthma attack. So our detective starts going back to rescue the girl. The girl doesn't know she needs rescuing yet. What essentially this means is that the mother was actually trying to call people to warn them and tell them about the yeah. girl coming for them. That's the thing that I I, I didn't get. The first couple times that I've seen it, I, I didn't get it until you said something about it. Where basically, yeah, she wasn't passing, forwarding a curse. She was 
calling people to warn them, the ghost is coming for you. This is how you die. You have this much time to figure it out. That's what the mom was doing. Well, and she's doing this because the daughter is basically trying to get vengeance on everybody that was in her phone. Mm -hmm. The the daughter's a horrible person. Yes, the daughter's awful. The daughter's the daughter's the worst, which makes for another scene I really like. But it's really cool. So the, the our main girl is in her home, and the detective starts banging on the door, and so she starts coming, and then he's like, "Hey, hurry up! Hey, uh, get here!" And then she he says something like, "Hey, how are you going?" And she and she was like, she responds, and he goes, "Hey, how are you going?" She responds and he goes, Hey, how are you going? Like it just gets stuck in a loop. Yeah. And, and she needs, she realizes she needs to look through the peephole. Her She gets up to the peephole and and she's smart enough to look away immediately because like it comes, it's, it's like X-Men style, like a Wolverine claw. (laughs) Which if I'm being honest, where where did that power come from? But whatever. (laughs) Well, we, we never, we never saw that she didn't, we never saw that she, did not have powers. We never saw that she wasn't Wolverine. We, we, that's exactly. <laughs> so, like, we we don't know. It's fair. Maybe that's why. Well, well, we did see she used a knife, but yeah, maybe she was going to test out which one was sharper. Yeah. So, uh, so our our ghost our uh, ghost girl is on the other side of the door, and then suddenly she's in the room because ghosts don't care about doors. Again, doors, and uh, they just want to scare you. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah. Make you look in the peephole. Yeah. <laughs> see, see your dead grandmother hanging. And uh, so, to cut a long story short, basically, uh, the ghost girl possesses our main girl. Well, and then- well, well the we, we, we cut away, so we don't know that's happened. We, yeah, meet, well, we, go, we, we come up with the, the, the ghost detective. The coming at her, and she's screaming, and then... Uh, so we cut to the detective, detective and we come upstairs with her, and everything's normal. Everything is fine, and they hug, and it's beautiful. And then she For sticks a, a fucking knife in her in his stomach, and then we see in the reflection that oh, it's the little girl that's in the reflection, not 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 the leading lady, and so that's bad news. Yeah, no, not a fun time. He, he passes out, he wakes up, there she is, she's holding a knife behind her back, but, but, she but, 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 kisses but, him. But before he does that, before that happens, remember, he also visits the dead oh, girl. Oh, that's the scene the I really like. That's yeah. the scene I really like. He visits the dead girl at that moment when she's having the asthma attack in a sort and of dream. Her, basically. Basically. He kind of like... Yeah. Uh, well, earlier in the film, when they were looking at her house, he actually pocketed the, uh, the inhaler. Uh-huh. And so he gives the inhaler to her and saves her. Then he wakes up and he sees the main character who kisses him and puts a candy in his mouth. Which, which we is, mentioned is something. Well, it's, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's a sign of the, of the curse. And the little, the, the little girl would abuse her sister and then give her candy. And every and so single person like, that got the ring tone... Uh, so the phone call curse after they died a, a candy would roll out of their mouths so the the ghost always gave you a treat after she punished you wait a second after so was, was he already dead then is he already dead before we see before here's, he the thing. Up? here's the thing i don't know how much of the final two scenes with him giving the asthma inhaler to the girl that's been dead for a while and also the scene with him in a bright white hospital room that looks like heaven with her standing over him with a knife and she smiles before it cuts to clouds and everything which again brings to mind heaven stuff i don't know how much of the last two scenes happens in the real world Uh, you're right i didn't i didn't realize that the second like, like I knew the first scene didn't happen in the real world because obviously yeah. that's in the past, but I didn't really take into account that room definitely isn't a normal hotel room or hotel. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you take the stab people. <laughs> um, no, it wasn't a normal hospital room. There's but. something wrong with that final scene and it leaves you to wonder. And I don't know that I have answers for you. 
But I, I do believe she, that gave, she gave you the thing afterwards, and so I think that he has to have been dead in that. Yeah. Or the other, the other way of reading it. Well, actually, so we, what we should mention is like, so she's holding the knife there. She puts that in. He closes his eye and enjoys the candy. Opens mm-hmm. them, she's which is normal. also. Yeah, she's normal. We see the clouds, then we end. Yeah. And so, so if he's already dead after because she's given him the thing, that means that like he is in the afterlife, and his af- and she's also dead mm-hmm. because they're together. And so it's yeah. kind of cute. It's kind of cute, except she has a knife. And <laughs> but um, well, she hasn't. She has a knife only until she doesn't. Mm we end with her normal so like that could be the relinquishment. yeah i think they're both dead at the end of the movie i think that uh her body at least is sacrificed to the ghost and and he's stabbed to death and uh i think that we recall the sister's l- lines to him about we each have a sky of our own and basically yeah, that's why this his, guy means he's dead yeah, for sure yeah. he he his heaven is with her which is sweet and it's that is kind scary. of scary. Well, um, you, that's, it's not surprising that there's a love undertone to this because I was looking into the author because this was this was based on a novel by Yasushi Akimoto, and I could not find this novel, but I was looking into him, and uh-huh. he is he's the most successful lyricist in Japan. He makes huh. idol groups, and between all their hits that he has he has written, it makes him the most successful. I would have never guessed that. I would not ever guess that either. It's very weird, very, very, very bizarre. But it kind of makes sense why there's like this sort of lovey tone to the end, and it ends with a, with the sort of kind of like. I wonder if he wrote the song that ends the movie. I don't know if I can find that out right now, but uh, interesting. What do you think of what do you think of this movie overall? Because I personally think it's a pretty close to masterpiece. I'm not quite on the masterpiece level with it. I think that too much of the movie doesn't make the most sense. I think too much of the movie uh, borrows from other movies, but I do really like it. I I think Mike's uh, putting on a masterclass as a director. Um, this was one of, uh, his biggest hits of the time. Uh, he, before then he, he'd made, he'd already made audition, but audition was more successful overseas than it was in Japan. And so he was well, still it influenced like e- Eli Roth and Hoskins. Yeah. And all yeah. That. Yeah. And, um, but Mike, you know, was still something of the bad boy, uh, in Japan and hadn't really done much, uh, mainstream horror. I mean, Ichi the Killer was a success, but how the hell do we call that movie a mainstream movie? Anyway, no, but that um, movie, that's a, that's a, that's a literature adaptation. <laughs> um, but, I uh, read that manga. but, um, I think it's a it's it's a it's a good uh it's a good movie and Mike does a really good job. I like um I like what our leads bring to it. Uh Ko Shibasaki, uh who plays the leading lady. We saw her previously in Battle Royale. Uh she's really good, very pretty. Um we'll, we'll, we'll see her with, with Mika again later too in um what is it, Over Your Dead Body? And uh, leading man Shinichi Susumi, who I adore because he's so fucking funny. Um, in this movie, he's not funny. He's this is one of his first leading roles, but he's he's good in it. In a basically a role that a, oh, let's be honest, a lot of actors could have played, but he's he's good in it. Um, and I also like seeing um, some other Mike regulars show up in the film, like uh, Renji Ishibashi, who plays the detective. The very skeptical detective and Goro Kishitani, who, um, he, he, was he the guy that was looking on the computer, dead body? Yes. Yes. yes he was, I was a, trying to figure out who he was. Yeah. He's in a lot of BK stuff. Um, okay. So he's in itchy then, right? He is in itchy, the killer. I can't, I couldn't tell you if he's in itchy, but he's in, um, graveyard of honor. Uh, the, Yakuza video game adaptation. He's awesome in that movie. 
that movie's actually good. Um, but uh, he plays odd characters in Mickey movies, and uh, okay. he's a he's an odd character in this one too. Um, yeah. So it's, it's actually good, really yeah. interesting. It's really interesting to me though that you pointed out that you think one of the detriments to the film is that it's heavily referencing and borrowing elements from the the J horror of that time. That's actually one of my positives and why I recommend it. See, the reason why I say that is that sometimes it's like you can you can how much does it add to horror cinema if it's taking so much from other horror cinema i think that it does enough of its own that it's not a complete ripoff and i think that it actually makes for a really interesting and a kind of i almost want to say broad uh for a singular film a sort of broad entry point into japanese horror like if if you throw on this podcast because you wanted to listen to our voices and not because you're a fan of Japanese horror, then th- I think this film would actually be a good starting point. I would actually agree with that. I mean, I might suggest other ones, but no, it's a, it's a perfectly good place to start. It covers a lot of the bases. It's well-made. Uh, you get to know one of the bigger names that will be coming up a lot more, Mike. Um, and uh, no, it's a it's a really good starting point because in a way it's sort of the it can almost be called a J horror greatest hits movie. Yeah, that's 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 I, I agree with that too. Yeah, absolutely because it does it references what was big at the time because you have sort of references to the Grudge and the Ring and uh-huh. Dark Water and you have Mike, but but you also have it in a way like. There are a couple grotesque moments, but really, they're very. It's a very tame movie. They're grotesque in the way that the. Um, it's a horror movie. I mean, it's it's gonna well, be. It's a horror. It, it, it's a horror movie, but it's a horror movie in the way of like an amusement park horror ride is. Like mm. it's 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 not. It's not the extreme horror house no. that they're gonna throw you in the wall and bury you alive. It's a nice sort of leisurely stroll where there's going to be a couple moments where there's a couple frights and a couple nasty things, but nothing too bad. So you're no. not going to have you're not going to have that like overwhelming moments right. that you have with like addition or something. Yeah, where you, it's you, really extreme for uh, for um, for horror fanatics. You're going to find what you're looking for, and for people that are horror kind of scares them a little bit. You will be creeped out at times. You will be grossed out at times. You will be okay in the end. This is not going to fuck you up. This is, a, you know, it's probably pushes the PG-13 rating a little bit hard. It's, it, I think it's probably an R movie, but um, it's, you know, it's safe enough. I guess I would it would, it would not have been, it would not have been an R movie in the nineties though. Mm. Like the eighties and nineties, this would have got away with. Oh, for sure, in the eighties. So yeah, I think that's a good start. Now it's very important, and here we'll be pointing towards next week a little, but it's very important to remember that if you are starting with one missed call, fucking skip one missed call two and one missed call three. <laughs> I I kind of like one missed call three, even though it's not a good movie. It does some things I like, but it doesn't do enough of them. I mean. Okay, if you're buying the new trilogy from Arrow, you're going to want to watch those discs, that that second disc, someday. But you don't need to be in a rush for it, and we'll explain why in the next episode. Welcome to the second episode of One Miss Pod, where, much like the characters in this series of films that we're covering, we're also cursed. Our curse, unfortunately, is also the One Miss Call ghost, and the fact that the sequels aren't a lot of good. Aren't a lot of good isn't very good speaking, <laughs> but that's alright, because these films don't deserve it. Me so Kelly, why don't you take over from my words and <laughs> introduce yourself and today's topic. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, so... um. 
Hi, I'm Kelly Warner. Uh, that was Zach Long. Uh, we're One Miss Pod, <laughs> and we're going to cover One Miss Call 2 and One Miss Call 3 Final today. Uh, the 20. It's actually not. It's only called Final. Is it? There's no three in the title. I, All right. I don't, think there, I don't think there's a three in the title. Okay. Well. Um, Which is like, I, I, have, I actually want to point out how, like, usually, usually films will stick around. You'll get three. You might even get number four. Like, mm-hmm. you usually at least three though if you're going that long um like when do like well if you're friday the 13th you keep the numbers the whole time but they jumped off and like by the second one they're like okay nobody's going to come to this if they see the third one if they see like a number three there like nobody's coming to see this movie yeah we're we're done we're tired too (laughs) <laughs> but, but but one of the things I must give uh, this series of films credit for, unlike so many other horror franchises, is when they put final in the title, they actually meant it. And they did not make yeah. an additional film. I Thank you God pointed, for that. <laughs> you pointed this out to me before the episode, and mm-hmm. I was like, oh, they made a TV series, though. But if you look it up, the TV series came out, I think, either the year before this or earlier the same year. So yeah. they did not lie. You're, you're right. It absolutely yeah. is the final. And uh, we should be Until thankful. Until America got yeah, involved. Yeah, the remake, and they were like, yeah, let's do this again. And um, no one wanted to do this again. And so... um. <laughs> and we're just because we're Americans. No, wait, I am American. You're Canadian. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm not that. American. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, sorry. See, sorry. See, you, you, you get it wrong on me, and I apologize. That's just how <laughs> we're all here. <laughs> okay. So, um, but like an American studio, we're bringing the One Miss Call series back to you to make you suffer. And um, so, yeah, let's talk about One Miss Call 2 and then One Miss Call Final uh, today. Uh, yes. I okay, so let's 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 start at the let's start at the beginning and the beginning oh. is not it's not even these it's not even the second film we'll get to that in a second let's start with the beginning of this show why did we decide on calling it one missed pod because it sounded cool yeah but that's also- all it was that, that's literally <laughs> all it was we we're like okay how can we how can we like reference Japanese, Japanese horror. horror without having to be like, hey, it's a Japanese horror podcast. Right, because we were trying all these names and that was in there all the time. <laughs> Japanese horror podcast, you know, all these scrambles of words that put J-horror, Japanese horror in it. And I was like, one Miss Pod. And it's like, okay, we didn't come with that, up with anything better. <laughs> Let's go with it. Well, we had we had one that was like, we, what was it? It was based off 100 Monster or 100 Yokai or Oh, whatever. yeah, yeah, Yokai Monsters, yeah. Yokai um, Monsters, that's it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And like, not- which was, that was, that was all right, but that was not as good as One Miss Pod, so. Yeah, so, so we got this name. Arrow had just put out yeah, the box yeah. set. Yeah, but I mean, though we like the name, One Miss Pod, we, we dig it. Uh, it should not be construed that we love the <laughs> series as a whole. We love uh-huh. the first film. The uh, sequels Everything are- we The first film is gr- actually great. Like, uh-huh. I, as, as we, we talked about in the last episode, uh-huh. I hadn't liked it very much. Like, like I liked it well enough, but kind uh-huh. of in my, whatever, who cares? Rewatching, loved it. Yeah. And then everything else to do with the series is embarrassing. Yeah, I, I had seen the sequels before, um, Years back, uh, probably not long after when they were first initially uh, initially released in the states, and um, I th- I liked them well enough. Um, I don't know what I saw in those movies that time um, because they're they're oh, not how they're, how naive I was. <laughs> yeah, I was so I was so young. I um, I did not think I had seen them, and then as we watched them together, yeah, we, and... we watched them together the same night, uh, back to back. Well, I mean, we just we, we even did voice and just like yeah, just marathon that, and uh-huh. it wasn't until we were getting to uh, Sleeveless's death and oh, the end of number two where I realized like I've seen this before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, only the sign the of a good scene, movie, which that final scene is pathetic and weak, but that describes this. It's very very upsetting. So we we picked so yeah we picked this because of the name because it t- sounds cool it looks cool we dig it it makes us stand out a little bit because it's like 
you know, it'll be harder to search for, so we'll get less listeners. It's great. Yay! I don't care. The ones that we get are lovely, so thank yeah. you. I love you. But thank you for listening. We made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, um, we moved the graves but left the bodies. <laughs> so, yeah, um, well, let's get into talking about why these movies suck and why we made a mistake and why we suck. Well, okay, well, okay, do you want to go into it that way or do you want to go into the films individually? Because we could do it either way. <laughs> uh, let, let's, let's, let's do it a little bit individually. Let's do it a little bit individually. Uh, Let's start with how did when was call one end? Uh, they they pretty much uh, they they thought they solved the curse, but they didn't. And and our main girl was possessed by demon curse girl. When when was call one ended with our main detective fucking dying and passing into the afterlife and seeing heaven, and then cut yeah. the credits. And so we had we all we know is that she was possessed. And uh, when was called two. It, it it references that movie. Um, it 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 also tries to retcon much of that movie. It doesn't do that right away though. No, no, it's horrible. It, it, it takes it. So so I really do want to touch on this point uh, like deeply, actually. Mm-hmm. But before we talk about retconning, can we mm. kind of? I want. I would just like to take a moment and set up what I remember of the plot. <laughs> what we remember. You might remember it better than I do because well, I was on. A lot of edibles that night. <laughs> I will not but say what I was on that night, but yeah. The film the film begins and we follow a series of kids the same sort of the same way. Like like we we meet them sequentially and then They're all gorgeous human beings and sometimes they're you know, all they're all beautiful. No no that's even more so in the next one though. Oh yeah, I mean I, I looked though, and almost every main cast member from the sequels was a model. Uh, yeah, so yeah that's, what, that's, all they, that's all that. Of course, they were. But so these character, these characters immediately like don't they don't have anything going on really. Like when we, when we start at one missed call, right away. The call affects a friend of the main girl, and the main girl is there to hear it and starts really focusing in on this. But with this one, we have a gr- one group that gets it there, but then we start going over to Taiwan also uh-huh. with a maybe reporter, maybe... Yeah, there's a reporter. I think she was a reporter, and she's visiting somebody there, and we cut back between these two groups, and it's very very confusing to tell where we are or mm-hmm. who we're with yeah yeah this is a part of the fact, one part one reason for this is i'm i'm in canada and i don't speak either of the languages being yes. spoken I, so. I do think that's a big part of it because they are speaking mandarin and japanese throughout the film and people that know one of those two languages will pick up on that someone like us will will notice enough that we can tell that's a different language but sometimes when you're just trying to keep up with the plot it's just subtitles you know and so yeah it in this the movie does not do a good job of uh trying to um make the two different locations uh tokyo and taiwan have a different enough of a feel and so you really get lost especially because some of the stuff in japan seems to take place in something of a a a chinatown area of japan so you're a little bit lost there too so um and i mean there's That's another cool. problem too that happens which is that there's there's the the curse is no longer the same curse it's mostly the same there's a there's actually a nice um evolution of the curse throughout the series that i do mm-hmm. want to touch on in a moment or two yeah uh, after we do after we talk about retcon in as well because mm-hmm. it can be it's the it can be the positive flip side of that but one thing that really kind of bogs this story down is that there's multiple curses and so people are having to find information about different things and it's very hard to figure out who's talking about what at any time because you have to juggle a lot of Uh like information and this jumping around at the same time and like the people who are dying don't die in any spectacular way at all. No, and sometimes there's a long stretch between deaths. So it's a it's a movie about a death curse where 
that's totally unspectacular. Like a death curse movie should be something that makes you go, holy shit, that's a horrible way to die. Such as the movie or the TV studio death. Yeah, from the first film. Yeah. And um, this one, it's just kind of... Uh, this movie is very blah. That's 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 my that's my one word re- re- my one re- word review. Blah. It's a blah movie, and I have a hard time following it. I uh, just didn't care. I had a very weird interaction on Twitter when I I got into a conversation with somebody about how the oh um I put we were talking about like Letterbox the last four mm-hmm. and. I one miss call three was in mine uh-huh. and they said something about like how I was more generous with with it than they were and I was like well after the second one like it was much better I actually they were like, well, the second one had better set pieces they replied so I Kelly I want you right now right now what was one of the set pieces from the second one I can name two um the mine and also the, There's a wait, the mine. Yeah, there was a mine. The coal mine, like a like a mine shaft mine. Yeah, or like yeah. an explosion mine. Uh, no, the the like the, the like a mine shaft. What was the mine shaft? That's where the <laughs> that's where the curse started with the the girl being tortured in the mine shaft and um. Oh and yeah, shaft. it got like torture porny in the flashbacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, that's the oh, ghost. That that's the so ghost. Fucking stupid. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was horrible. Um, that was like that was just like that was just like 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 okay in the in the first one we do have okay so so Mike does set the idea of first off uh, violence against children, mm-hmm. and that's carried into two, and actually three in a different way. Yeah, but he also he also does layer in just the idea of like cruelty but like the, it's about that one's about abuse and it deals with that stuff mm-hmm. and it brings in this in mm-hmm. a way where it's not gratuitous but th- this one feels those flashback scenes feel close more reminiscent of like flowers of flesh and blood yeah it is uh it is a little bit more gratuitous and and it's all trying to th- this one this movie does not creep you out at all it does not try to do that it tries to shock you on occasion but that doesn't work too well but that's what that's that's well, its method of scare that's that's because this is this isn't a horror movie i don't think kelly don't you it don't, tries you, don't to be. you know that this is no 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 it doesn't don't you realize oh, this trying. was a romance the whole time yeah we figured that out afterwards yeah yeah this was a romance yeah, so after the movie ended, we watched uh, uh, some of the stuff on the new Arrow Blu-ray, and uh, there's a music video for One Miss Call 2, which, clearly, I mean, I think that it's... Uh, well, when you, when you hear that, you go, wait wait a second, how do you make a... How how do you make a music video about a movie where nothing happens? But it, 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 it portrays like, like, the movie as a romance well, well, between this girl and uh, Mr. Sleeveless, you know, and... Um, well, that's... And, the the when you watch the movie, you're totally unaware that these two are in love. I thought they were brother and sister. Um, the the experience that I had going into going into this music video is like, did you ever see Resident Evil? Mm-hmm. Uh, when Resident Evil came out on DVD, it had a Slipknot music video on the on it, I believe. Mm. And and like so, it in that video, it's like them fighting zombies and her kicking dogs. So you're like, okay, I see how. Um, mm-hmm. I see how you make a music video out of a supposed yeah, sure. like a oh, horror movie it. yeah. thing. It's like okay, so this is a horror movie, a music video for a horror movie, and I'm like, how do you do a music video for a horror movie in a movie with no horror? And then mm-hmm. we put yeah, and there's no horror in the in the vid- video. I want to say though about the one missed call to music video, it is better directed than the movie itself. Oh no, it's great. It's actually yeah, like it's like like we find so considering song. they had to like portray sleeveless as anything but. You sleeveless. <laughs> oh, Ke- Ke- Kelly, for the audience, what is a sleeveless? <laughs> okay, so um, the, the the male lead of the movie, uh, who we dubbed sleeveless because he's basically always in the movie with uh, a, a tank top on. Uh, he's played by um, I think Peter Ho, I think his name was, and he um, just uh, the movie is just trying to make sure you know this guy's a hunk, 
And that's why you should care about his character. Well, he he starts out as a cook, like he's just a cook. Yeah, so yeah, at yeah, first yeah. when he has like a sleeves, so you're like, cook. okay, well, it's like it's it's really warm in there. Yeah, and yeah, yeah that's that that's a natural. Uh, <laughs> that's, where, that's where you. That's where you. That's where it's okay to be sleeveless. Yeah, it makes in sense. A movie sense. If you're working in a real kitchen, put some fucking sleeves on. Come on. But then he never. He doesn't put find sleeves. his sleeves. He doesn't find his sleeves <laughs> until the end of the movie. Until the end of yeah. And then at the end dead. of the movie, he betrays himself and he puts on sleeves and then he dies. And so that's the moral of the story. That's the moral. He knew that if he put on sleeves, he would fucking die. He knew that, and he did it anyway because he loved it's her. It's really kind of sad when you think about it, but um, I know I'm gonna cry. I, I'm oh, misty eyed. I want to talk a little bit about. So we didn't realize it's a, it's a romance. So what's happening is at, 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 hmm. in the beginning of the film is like it. The, we're introduced to a couple a bunch too many characters to follow because the, nobody has a personality or does anything. Yeah, but and some of them in, the are kitchen, in, in, in the kitchen is owned by this other gentleman who has a daughter who is maybe the main character, and if not, it's the main character's friend. Yeah, uh, and so her phone her phone rings, and the father picks it. Well, it rings with the curse ring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the father picks it up and hears her death and is like, "What the, what, what is going on?" And then she walks in. And he's like, "What the hell? How did that happen?" Then later that night, her death doesn't happen. The father dies. So it sets up this idea that, that the curse can be intercepted if you pick up the call. And when you think that when you think about it, it's called one missed call. So the idea that if you answer it, you die, that's actually kind of neat. Yeah, but, that's... but that would go entirely against the first movie's curse. So, but yeah, the rules are really kind of fucked so. with in this one. Yeah. That's our first evolution of the curse, which is a positive kind of change. Why don't you yeah, talk sure. about more about how those rules are fucked up or in retcon in general? Um, well, that okay. So, um, so one of the major retcons is that um, okay, one major character, the only character that returns from the first film and is on screen is the detective played by Renji Ishibashi, who is the older guy. It's about the only person that looks blue collar in a film surrounded by models. Um, and so he was a skeptic in the first one. He's a believer in this one. And um, he basically, uh, you know, um, tries to explain away some of the previous film. For example, we get information at one point in the movie that the main character of the first film, who, remember, last we saw, was possessed by the ghost and was all stabby, um, that uh, she's disappeared, and then they, she's found dead, killed by her own hand, that she was never possessed by a ghost. She just The ghost just reminded her of her own inner evil, and that's what made her a murderer. It's such bullshit. Do you remember how we learn about that? Like, like, like just, just the character what? just tells us that it's, it's like, it's like over the phone. At one point, that someone gets a phone call, and the the only point for this scene is like they're walking in the street, and then they get the call. They stop. They don't do anything. They're not moving. They just stand there the whole time, and then we go to the next fucking scene. So the, if you're going to nothing. do that. It's the cheapest and laziest fucking way to do it. It is. It it actually made us mad. Yes, that's what that that is the point where the movie absolutely like lost any chance. Yeah, I mean, it, it had to be. It was so slow up to that point, like that. So we, I said that the father died. Mm-hmm. It happened. All, they just find his corpse. It happens off yeah. screen. Yeah. Um. And and. To the to the film, I don't know if credit is the right word. The movie tries to make his uh, corpse as grotesque as possible. Uh, possible, I think he like um falls on the grill. Yeah, he he does it, which like okay, I kind of dig that. But then like they do like almost a they do the torture porn version of a close up. Oh with yeah, it. they're absolutely trying to make you feel queasy at parts, and it's it it really. I mean, I give the movie points for trying to do something different in the first film, but it doesn't do it well, and so those points are meaningless. And it's very lazy because it's it would be. I do think that disgust is a perfectly. I mean, I write about this in screenwriting. Uh-huh. I think that disgust is a perfectly valid form of affecting your audience. Sure. 
it can be very, very powerful, but if it's the only thing you bring, the show gets old real fucking quick. Mm-hmm. And that, so like, if you're not, if you're not nailing the rest of it and, it, and it, and it's not even that I don't, it could be fine to go pure disgust without any ghosts, without sure. any of the really suspense stuff, but you have to really be nailing the story to keep people invested and you have to be nailing everything else. And like, one of the things that, we've only kind of touched on tangentially through interjection on my part. Sorry. Hmm. Is that this film is shot really fucking ugly and just simple yeah. and boring. And it's a boring movie. And it, it, it does it not looks have Mikkei's charm. No, no. Mikkei use great cinematography, great sound design, all these things to the film's benefit. This one all right, listen. The movie is directed by Renpei Sukamoto. I might my, I might be mispronouncing the first name. I apologize. Um, he had done only a couple of uh, things before this, and for the most part, his filmography is full of comedy and TV work. Um, to me, the that kind of uh tells you a little bit about. There's not much in there to suggest a um. A visionary? Yeah. There's this is not a um director that works with a big skill set toolbox on how to make uh horror scares and all the like. And it's just kind of it's a dull looking film, it's a it's a it's dull storytelling, and I just I really don't like this movie. One thing I do want to talk about is um in J horror in particular of this time was very much interested in how new emerging modern technology uh, was affecting, um, you know, a younger uh, generation. And, Absolutely. And, and oftentimes it used these modern devices uh, as some sort of source of scare. You know, one must call cell phone. To be fair, though, America was doing this as well. Sure, sure. I think, I think this is a sign of the world. It, like, well... These, these technical centers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a lot of, um, you see that a lot in a lot of J-horror, and uh, like you say, a lot of horror at the time. One Miss Call, the first film, the Mike film, uses that as a springboard to just do its own thing. The sequels, to me, feel very much like they're trying to be cell phone horror films. The third one especially. Yeah, there, there are multiple shots in both these films of uh cell phones glitching oh, up right. and it's like that's not scary it's like oh the this oh the text is deleting itself that's terrifying no it's not it's not terrifying this is really dull stupid hey, horror i'll let you tell that to unfriend it <laughs> unfriend it um <laughs> that's the right response <laughs> so um you know it, it, it's it's a movie. the The sequels are very much more technology horror than the first film was, and I don't think that that benefits either of them. But I do think it's worth noting because of the 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 period of horror that these films came from. It's going it's going to especially be very very clear in one of the films that we're going to be touching. I'm not going to tell the uh, I'm not going to tell you when because. We don't have it locked down yet. We don't know what, we're but doing. definitely in the definitely in the first ten, uh, there's a, there's a film we'll be talking about this in much 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 more depth. I believe. I think you can figure out what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite of mine. You you mentioned the fact that this is a director who directed comedies, mm -hmm. and I really I really think that that doesn't show itself in the horror, which is kind of a surprise to me because yeah, comedy no. and horror are both very, not slapstick, but they're very, uh, very rhythmic. Yeah. I mean, look and, at Sam Raimi. You can see how, you know, uh, horror gags and, uh, comedy gags, uh, kind of, well, I mean, look so. at, um, uh, what was the, uh, the goblin one? Uh, yeah, that, which was very Sam Raimi. Uh, Hiroku the Goblin. Uh, yeah, which, 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 which is very, like, like that's, that's Japanese version of Sam Raimi, essentially. Yeah. And so you can have that comedy and horror balance and in, in show that the rhythm, the rhythm does mm -hmm. work. 
And now this was, I'm not saying this should have been a comedy because that's clearly mm-hmm. not the right approach and it doesn't yeah. try to be, I will give it points on that, mm-hmm. but it's very surprising that it doesn't have that right rhythm. But yeah. then the arrow release of the series has a short film that the director made. It's a promotional tie in. What? Like two, three minutes. Uh, four, four. I think when I watched it, I had a very visceral, oh. I had a very, very visceral <laughs> experience, but in my memory, in my memory, it has softened. And uh, the only reason it has softened is, is because like, it's, it's for the exact same reason I hate it. Cause I hate it for the very end moment, but it uh, also looks like the one time when like the young actress is just like having a blast and has like a real, like, <laughs> good mm-hmm. time you know like yeah and so like in my, in my memory i'm like well like at least that like, kid got paid for a fun night <laughs> or, or like fun day like mm-hmm. but it's so bad watching it i wanted to punch my tv and i was like <laughs> oh my god because you told me you watched it you told me to watch it and i watched I did, it i did i did yeah it, you remember I, anything more than the end just um, it tries to build suspense, and then there's the end, and it's well, set okay, in the well, office, and it's just horrible. Okay, I can I can do better than that. Come on. <laughs> uh, okay, so what ha- what happens is we have this guy, a police detective, I think, and yeah. he's he's like in this office, and he's calling, and he's trying to get. He's he or, or we like cut to her, and she basically just like shows up, and suddenly we're having like whatever the non-racist version of a Mexican standoff is between, between like little tiny go- ghost and, and him just like, like what's going to happen. We know he's cursed. She's coming for him. Like it, it sets that up and it's actually, it is, it's not good, no. but it's really, it is really trying to build tension. You can see that and you're like, okay, like I can see what this is going for. And you know, they probably shot it in an afternoon okay. with like, so, lunch break you know but obviously they also wrote it on that lunch break uh-huh. because they did not have an ending so as they're facing and we're waiting like what what fucked up crazy thing is going to happen to kill him because if you put a fucked up crazy death in that moment then that that short promotional film will bring in ev- anybody like that'll bring uh-huh. in everybody yeah but instead like he- I don't. I'm confusing what happens to him because it was really dumb with what happens to the bully in the third movie because it was really dumb. It d- didn't like in this Gomu. Didn't like a bunch of post-it notes shoot out of his mouth. It, okay, so that did happen. Okay, so it. it uh, so like, yeah, a bunch of a bunch of notes or something shoot out of his mouth, and the ghost like. It wasn't this at the time, but the ghost dabs away. Yeah, dabs. Like dabbing didn't exist, but that's. The, the ghost dabs away. <laughs> it's it in that, and then it just ends, and you're like, "What?" Because because you're and you're pissed off at it because of the fact that like it builds up to this, and you're waiting, yeah. and you're like, "Okay, you have it." Yeah, it feels like a prank on the audience, and it pretty much is. But here's the thing: I wonder is um okay, say this was a promotional tie-in, which I mean we have every reason to believe it was. It's obviously set in the one Miss Call universe. Yes. Who is this movie for? Who is this short movie for? Who is who's going to see that? Who's and the think, audience that's going to see this? What, who is going to like? Who's, who's going to see, see that and short go and think, that? ah, that, that's that, a what? that's a fine representation of one missed call two. That'll get me to the theater. What the well, fuck? That's, is, that's why I say you put a gory scene there. That's how you make it that. Yeah, but I really it's don't not know a comedy. So why do you end it with a comedy shot? Yeah, it's it's bizarre. Um, I almost kind of, yeah, I'm almost kind of admiring how. At least it it's weird how the ending stands like my, out better. I like my short Yeah. I mean that's 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 also my short film. Yeah. My short film was all about just getting to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Happy ending. But here's the thing though, you say that it kind of feels like a prank on the audience and uh-huh. it does the exact they do the exact same thing almost in the third one there because they do like a they have a moment and it's really good and it's yeah. getting really intense and you're mm-hmm. like what is about to happen and, and then, then it drops all in every way and Fuck. we're gonna have to get into that in a moment mm. but you got anything left to say about the second one in the short film because i fucking i'm tired of it <laughs> I, final verdict i don't like them 
it wasn't good. Neither. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm, gl- I'm glad everybody got paid. I guess. It was a movie. I. That guy sure didn't wear sleeves. Kudos to him. It was not good, and I. It's going to be a long time till I rewatch it. Yeah. No, I think that's going to be said for the the back set as a whole where it's like ah disc one is going to see some love disc two with the sequels um yeah no i'm going to watch number three a couple times Mm. but mostly for some really okay so Uh, okay i'm just gonna do the rundown number three real quick in number three a class of kids from japan or it was a class, right? Yeah, yeah, That's it's, what a, it was. it's a high school class from it's Japan. A high school class trip. So this class trip goes to South Korea, mm-hmm. where we meet the most boringest character who has ever been in a movie. We'll yeah. get to that. The Korean. And boy. while they're in South Korea, a curse goes around with them. And with this curse, to to build on the evolution of curse discussion, uh, there's an evolution where what this one is is not a call, but a text message or an email. It sounds like an email. <laughs> I because I, I didn't. But it's, I think it's a text message. I'm not sure. It, it 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 operates the same either way. Yeah, the idea is if you get this message, you you can forward it to somebody, and that will kill them instead of you. Yeah, yeah. Forwarding so saves it, you, but it dooms someone else. Yeah. And the film gets into some amazing stuff with these kids, and not. None of none of the stuff like none of the stuff that happens with like it's not like oh this is amazingly written it's just like okay like this is really dark and fucked up like for one yeah. example they 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 the, they take the nerd's phone because he gets it and they shove him in a closet and they just wait and listen as he dies and this that's a really cool death where his fingers bend backwards and stuff yeah. mm-hmm. and it's really fucking cool. One and then later, really is dark. Really, it kind of is. There's, a, there's another one where, like, the bullied kid uses it to get revenge, which I want to talk more about that <laughs> one. And there was um, the teacher gets sent one, mm-hmm. uh, which was fun. And the teacher was taking everybody's phones away, so he was essentially damning them. So basically, the kids were like, "Well, we have to kill him." <laughs> but there was there was one there was one more that happened that was really really dark, and it was just like wow it's just it's it's a little bit like it's it's really cruel it is it's very cruel and as they're as they're as these kids are going nuts they are like doing like like when it first starts out and there's a lot of them uh-huh. and like they start scrambling oh yeah i love the shots of them all running in the hallways well it, it's very it's very physical it's very like zulowski sort of is always very physical and very uh-huh. running and like very sloppily and hidden into things with uh his the actors in his movies and it reminded me of that and so there's this really 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 kind of neat thing that's happening here with the this all and then um, that's like 20% of the movie and the rest of the movie is the fucking boring thing that gets into some little bit of weird, cool stuff, but like never in an interesting way. And so if you remember anything else about it, I think I've finished. Okay. Well, um, m- much of this film is about bullying, like abuse from the first one. That is and, true. And the second well, one. Well, it starts with the hanged girl too. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, um. This one has to do with bullying, and um, it starts with a, a high school girl who committed suicide, or did she? And um, and so the the curse is being sent by uh, oh, a bullied yeah. teen who we later find out is in a coma. But that's another thing, and um, but that's a confusing thing. Yeah, that's the confusing part. And so much of the movie, it's it's stupid. But so much of the movie is her at her computer tracing her mouse. Uh, over the screen of her class photo and, oh, no. and turning, the, turning the faces of her classmates into ghost distorted faces as she's like deciding who do I send it to next? Like, like, like every found footage film about a ghost did for like three years there? Yeah, but it keeps doing it. It thinks it's such a oh. cool visual and it just Oh, keeps... it's in love with it. It is in love. It sucked. And so she's a bullied individual who's exacting revenge and then the curse goes out into uh, the class and 
so many of these kids uh, basically are kind of sort of responsible for uh, the suicide earlier in the film. But the thing is, though, once uh, the curse starts entering the the, the school body and um, being passed back and forth, it's again uh, raises some issues of bullying and uh, um, and youth violence as some of these kids who some of them are bullies or some of them are just weaker and so they are taken advantage of by the group and then there's one kid who um when he gets the text he decides to send it to his bully and just laugh as the bully Can, freaks the fuck out i'm on that kid's side though i gotta be honest until he starts laughing but like he doesn't just send it to the bully he is there like he has it and he hasn't done anything and they come at like that bully yeah. comes after him and gets everybody like everybody on his side everybody mm-hmm. we have to talk about this scene <sighs> okay but before that i just want to say so much of the film has uh a sort of a um what do you call it uh battle royale and um yes and uh damn it what's the f- lord of the flies lord sort of the flies i was thinking about that with uh, yeah. like piggy there yeah, there's a lot of that in this movie. And I kind of like that. No, part. That's the thing. That's the good part. That yeah, all that stuff, that stuff is so interesting. It works. It really does. And I, I like the mad scramble of that section of the film. But then it makes some bizarre choices about chickens. <laughs> uh, well, it starts with a bizarre choice about a chicken. I mean, you mentioned that this was the film that you just remembered chickens. And like That's that all I remember. was a chicken in the first like minute. Chicken. And then the girl, oh yeah, the bully, like or not the bully, but the girl at the computer that's like making everybody die, sending out the yeah, she's got a thing of chickens, she pecking keeps order. chickens and pecking order. Yeah, but we got to talk about that bully's death because Ooh. this is this is almost the best. This is both the worst and and best scene. Yep. So you have you have this mad scramble like you just mentioned, and the kid finally like they they've they've got him backed into a room at this hotel. Uh-huh. It's a hotel, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And so they got him in the back of a hotel room, so there's like nowhere to go. Everybody's crowded in. He finally sends it to the bully, and once you send it, you can't like resend it. So, right. Like, yeah, that's the thing. You that, are that's doing an that person. And so the bully, the bully, like starts to like just kind of stay there and freak out, like kind of mm-hmm. stand in there, and he's starts I, convulsing and like gagging a little bit. And it's like eyes start going red and like blood starts kind of leaking out. And you're like, oh my God, what the fuck is going to happen? Uh-huh. And it's like the veins are starting to like pop on his face. And, and it's, it's like the scanner head blow up. You're, you're expecting I something scanner. like that. To say scanners, you can yeah. do it. <laughs> it's absolutely, it's so scanners. Well, especially though, uh, the end of scanners though, too, when like uh-huh. they, they're focusing the so veins. hard, yeah. they're popping. Uh-huh. Oh, so yeah, so uh, it's totally like that. But then he opens his mouth, and a bad CGI effect of not blood, but something dumb comes out, and I don't even remember what it was. How can you not remember what it was? Was it coin? No, chicken feathers. He just oh, God, vomits of chicken. Chicken feathers. He just vomits chicken feathers. It goes blah, and then all these chicken feathers oh. shoots out of his mouth like it's a fucking pillow that got burst. And oh my God, it, it was so bad. How, how could you not remember that? The chicken, chicken death. Because- because my brain blocked out the memories to try to protect me. It was for my own health. And then the movie was like, that was good. We're going to keep on talking about chickens. <laughs> and the worst part is, like, everything up until, like, 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 first off, bad CGI effect. Oh, no. yeah, it was horrible. But they could have done anything. They really could have done. I mean, even if you wanted to stick with a chicken theme, you could have done some messed up things with, um, Feathers have a, or have shit. A real chicken. Have a full live chicken come out of his mouth. Yeah, something or or, or peck its way out of his stomach. I don't know, but that, the, the that scene, would have been cooler than what they did. They 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 could have. The scene is so deflating. You know what? It's the never really 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 have the kernel pop out of him. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried my new six piece chicken tender? <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's a there's a Colonel Sanders dating game, right? I know. Yeah, it looks wonderful. You can actually die because if you try his 
food and it's t it tastes so good that you die because you can never taste something that good again so you just fly into another dimension of pure deliciousness are, are you fucking kidding me right now um it, watch the game grumps episode of it they do that they end up dying and they're like oh well i guess that's where we are <laughs> <laughs> wow and also i mean i mean just watch it because it's like the first 40 minutes or so and it's you'll have a blast okay all right and if you want to prep for the Dayton game we'll be working on, then you should. Yeah, yeah that's something else. Um, speaking of uh, dates, in the movie, the um, boyfriend character, because a lot is made about the, the, the female no, 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 coming not the boyfriend to... character. He's the most boring his character. You were close. Okay, but when they <laughs> arrive in South Korea, there all these other girls are like so uh, sorry uh, jealous of our main character because, oh, she's got a Korean boyfriend. And then we meet him, and it's like, Really, this is it. And um, okay, so he's a. Uh, I think he's hot. <laughs> he's no sleeveless. You're right. You know what? You know what? I was trying to think which one of these, which one of, the, one of these lovely men would I fornicate with first? And it's <laughs> definitely sleeveless. It's got to be sleeveless. This, this guy, this guy doesn't talk because this guy has some affliction where he doesn't talk because. They don't want to have to subtitle another, or they, sorry, they don't want to have to have a character break the immersion of the language that the country viewing audience would have seen. Yeah, that's basically country it. Country viewing audience. Wow, entirely. Uh, <laughs> In, instead of having him speak Korean, he just has to do sign language. Sign language the whole time. And, you know, props for representation. But at the same time, whenever this happens, it just shuts the movie down. It's it grinds to a halt. You could have sign. You could have sign language and be on the go for mm -hmm. one. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. You can have sign language and have background fucking music. Yeah. Okay. So much of this movie is a mad scramble sort of thing, and then when the boyfriend shows up to talk to the girlfriend, they basically stand at the bottom of the stairs and sign back and forth, and it's silent. Now I get silence but at the same time it is a movie we and should hear screams in the background i mean there's so that, much that would, happening that would be... yeah and <laughs> we should hear screams of the kids dying as his fingers are being snapped in the background and then we oh. just are looking at the korean guy who can't hear any of it and he's just smiling saying like hey i love you <laughs> and she's like cringing every time a bone snaps in the distance <laughs> but See, if they mean... did that that would be amazing that's how you do that <laughs> There you go, movie. Yeah, I mean, props for trying to make, uh, you know, s some representation and also bringing a Korean actor into the movie because so hey, props many props for uh, trying to save some money in but post production. I mean, so, so many Japanese films, Asian films of any kind, hell, American films will cast any Asian person as any Asian race, and so props for casting a Korean actor as a Korean character. But the fact that they won't let him talk is dubious and it doesn't help them film well no it doesn't it doesn't at all and it's clearly just like it's like well how do we it's it's just producer it's a producer's choice it's fucking yeah stupid. it's it's all about for the japanese audience it's so stupid that at the end of the movie when our girl uh gets the curse mm -hmm. and we'll have to talk about we'll have to talk about this curse thing a little it's been because I'm I'm disappointed in my girl personally, but when our girl, the main character, uh, the, the 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 boyfriend steals her phone, we yeah. find out and sends it sent it to himself and Sacrifices. walked outside, locked her in the door somehow. <laughs> Question <Okay>. mark. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just went and went and died in the street. And I'm pretty sure we cheered, and I think we were supposed to be crying. Yeah, we, 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 we definitely cheered. Um, <laughs> um, the thing is, it, it didn't show us the death. It showed us her reaction to some squishing, I think. And um, I remember I remember him. No, like it like he does. He does. I do. I do remember him. Like, oh, that's right. Arching yeah. backwards. Arching that's right. Like, we do see that. Yeah, that's right. We, that's see, right. we see like the start, the start of it. Because we yeah. like see him just enough so that we know that he's in pain, and then which which makes sense because like you got to show that if you want to make it like if, if you want the sacrifice to be a sacrifice, you got to show. I mean, the life part is, but it's like 
making it a painful death makes it real hit home. That makes sense. But, and it's not this film. Okay, here's another point. Actually, mm-hmm. this film has like like the the, the fingers bending backwards as a graphic effect. Mm-hmm. But this film is not torture porn in the way the other one. No, was. no, no, no. It's and this one does it really well. There's actually a really kind of unnerving shot or repeated shot throughout the film that I remember in particular you you didn't like, um, where the the ghost child has the face of an adult, and it's it's a bit weird. Um, do you what? remember? You don't remember oh, that? Oh my god! How how high were you? No, I was. Oh, well, I mean, I was really high, but I do kind of remember that. I don't know why I didn't like it. I think I was just actually bothered by it. Yeah, that's what I meant. I meant you were oh, a nerd. Okay, okay, I you were... Meant, I thought, okay, I was misunderstood. I thought you okay, meant that like I just were, thought it, it was bad. It got to you. Uh, okay. And um, yeah, and I and I liked that too. There was something a little bit odd about it as compared to the second film, which has, um. Just this creepy, but not really creepy, grinning girl as the ghost. Uh, this one has this bizarre age shift ghost thing, and it's it's a little bit unsettling. And I do I did kind of like that. The first one is definitely the best. That is <clears throat> remains so, but the, I think the third one is the second best. I, and I think I think that the third one gets. I think that it gets lost up its own ass. Yeah, especially in the final act. Like, like, like well, so we got the suicide, and then the suicide turns out that it, it, oh, she didn't die. But we thought that she died, and that made her friend real angry in that, but it didn't make her friend real angry because it turns out they're the same person, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, and two they're, characters. And, they're all, the and, they're, and, the, and the two characters are the same person, and the girl that hung herself didn't hang herself. She's in a coma, so she's the girl that's at the t- computer. So the girl that's at the computer is actually the girl that hung herself who's in the coma. And it's just, it gets very, like, it's a mess in the end. shifted. And, like, I one of the things I really like about Japanese horror is, like, sort of the level of ambiguity that there is to it and how fucked up it can play with reality. Mm-hmm. And this feels like, it. this feels almost more American in that it's, like, it doesn't tell us how this happens, but it really tries to kind of slow, slow down and make a little more sense of it in a way where it's, like, it just doesn't work. No, but. It doesn't. There's, there's another thing that we have to talk about. Oh, remember there was also uh, basically the outside the hotel basically looked like hell at one point. Wait, remember what? Uh, I don't remember that. The finale when the ghost and the girl are like at the window and it's like out, outside the oh window. Oh my god, you're right. It, 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 well, okay, at that part, at that part, well, okay, so once once we brought in the coma thing, we started to get a little bit more like... Weird shit weird sort of dreamy shit this happened in the first one with in that but this is no Mike. this feels very like this 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 doesn't feel thought out this doesn't feel in any sense like this does not feel like somebody's vision no it feels like they added that uh in post because there was something missing <laughs> but this director like he was best when he was working with the group uh-huh, uh-huh. Once it got once it got to the supernatural stuff, like what, like what with the group, with the group, like even when they're getting the calls and it's technically a supernatural thing, like there, it's all about them interacting with each other and like fighting and that yeah, part. The, and then the, you have the supernatural part, and one of them is great, and most of them suck. Yeah, but like the human part is really good. So this ending is like all supernatural, and you're right. Like I forgot, I did forget that it was a hellscape at one point. It's bizarre. What I what I wanted to mention though was we got it. We ne- we got to talk about my girl, uh, the the friend, the friend. Oh, I fell in love immediately. I Which is, I, there was there was a question of how many episodes in will we get before I reveal just how I fall in love with every Japanese woman alive. Uh, <laughs> Episode two is the answer, but no. So we first see her and she's like super happy to like she's super nice and happy that like her friend that the, the, the deaf guy shows up yeah, and they're at a dis- they're at a distance when they're signing which is like that's cool that's one of the one bonuses it has is like you, you can send messages really cool they never actually use that for anything that would have been really good for actually, yeah. some way yeah. uh so that there's another way how you could use a deaf character in a way with, that doesn't slow down your movie for one and doesn't represent them as just fucking incapable and stupid or like yeah but but so but 
my, my girl's super happy and that's super happy for her friend and like it's great and then she gets she gets i forget what the main character does to piss her off the main character does something that pisses her off at some point and she gets and she gets the call mm-hmm. and so what's she got to do i mean there's only one thing to do yeah and she did does, does she she dies doesn't she, she does. uh yeah she she dies so she didn't manage to get it off then so they had to get the cell phone from her because she was going to yeah i think that she got chased and then she uh couldn't get it off in time and uh yeah that's it she had it she was planning to but it was just too late oh. but it was like she she had to go out being like a turncoat yeah yeah and yeah. it was horrible because she was so wonderful so it's pure. like here's the thing like every time with the horror movies it's always the monsters i always fall for the monsters well at least you didn't fall for the deaf guy i mean well, that was the real that was the real monster in this movie <laughs> That has nothing to do with being death. That just has to do with the way that they fuck it. Like, like that. This is. There's no reason for the character to be death. That didn't bring anything. This is all a fucking. It was a producer's note, and it was fucking stupid. And it's the worst way that to possibly do that. I, I want to make that clear. We are not saying that there shouldn't be death or or any sort of uh, um characters. Uh, I mean. Listen, representation matters, and there should be all sorts of Very characters. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, but um, but it's still a boring character, and it doesn't matter what his background is or. Well, it's what not that the character's boring. It's that it doesn't ma- like. No, there's I mean, no. First no. off, this person, I, I I looked them up. I I forgot to look at whether or not they were actually deaf. I don't think they are. It just really seemed like there's like there's no reason for them to be except that hey this is the South Korean person we need in the cast because they're in South Korea and this person can't act worth a shit so let's make them deaf and then we don't have to- now I also want I also want to say that a movie doesn't need to have a reason to have a, a deaf character it doesn't but that's that's we, that's true but, but but you can sense a um a a motive behind this the character, the character themselves need to have a reason and his only reason was to die at the end heroically and if that's the only thing that they bring then they don't need to be in the fucking movie that's it, that's it you don't need a desus ex-boyfriend see see that's the thing we don't it's not that it's not that he's uh a, a, a bad deaf character though i think we one could argue that he is it's that he's yeah, a that's character that's not needed at all and his whole purpose is to die now most of the characters in the movie, their purpose is to die. It's a horror film, but at the same time, they're at least, they're at least in the class. Like they're yeah, at least they matter. And, and and this is the guy that's already there. Mm-hmm. He's not even. He's not even like staying at the hotel. He just like shows up he, he every now up, and then. And he wants to hang out with his girlfriend. Who, I, if I remember right, they only hug. I think they only hug, and it's like again. Um, and, oh yeah, well, well, they only hug, but also uh, I was like, oh, they they only hug. Oh, he's like breaking up with her. Oh, he's dying. Yeah, I know. I, we thought, <laughs> I thought, he, he thought, he, I thought it, it was just him breaking up. Yeah, yeah. It was like, it was oh, the, the, the final, final moment phone. together is so ambiguous as they do this hug. We, we later learned that he was stealing her cell phone, but the hug is so awkward where it's like, okay, was that it? Was he like, oh shit, this girl's got some baggage <laughs> yeah I mean, he's I like, like, I'm, I'm checking out now you I was know like, he's, he's breaking up with her and i would have given him no, it was his that. final goodbye yeah and i can't but, even but remember wait, throughout wait, the film. Can, we go, can, we, can we go into her can we go into her head okay does she know i don't even know if she knows she has it so if that was her final mm-hmm. goodbye so she thought that she was dying then. Oh, she did. Yeah. She, di- she shot. Okay, she, okay she so died. she thought she's dying. So wait, she's about to. Die. She thinks that she's dying. It, she's it's a horrible. To die. You are her boyfriend. You give her a hug, and then you walk the fuck away. That's the part. That's the problem. She doesn't know you used to hold her phone and is doing that thing. You just walk the. Fuck away. Did he switch mm-hmm. phones? Is that what he did? Did he switch? He did. He took. Didn't he? He, he, no. took he took hers. Yeah. Did he take? Did he take, give hers his? No, he had them both. I think at he the had end. both. Okay, yeah. so like, <sighs> yep. <laughs> see, see, I also want to ask: Can you remember anything throughout the film in any of the mad scramble and horror before the finale? Can you remember anything that the boyfriend did? 
other than talk to our girl uh and in a He's silent not, hallway. I, 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 I don't would I legit I, I I remember when he waved to her. Yeah, no, but I mean like in the because, hotel because of, when things are going girl. down. Is is no, he no, ever no, present? No. I don't think so. I don't think he's. I don't think he does a single fucking thing except that he he is the Desus ex boyfriend. The, the only he is he was only in the film to write a way out to save the main girl. Fuck, I hated that. And it's like and it's like this is the, first off, it's Japanese horror. Like look at look at what happened. Like look at the look, look at the biggest um like the grudge and stuff. Like look at some of the biggest influencers here, and like they they were like no everybody fucking dies. What are you talking about? And and on the note of representation, it is not good representation when you put a, a character into a film to be a sacrifice for the perfect woman. You know, I mean, it's just not. I mean, I'd sacrifice myself for the perfect woman, but that. <laughs> okay, okay, but you, 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 that's not the point. I know, I, know, I, know, I know what you, I know what you mean, absolutely, and I agree one hundred percent. That is not the perfect woman. No, no, uh, no. She, she, she's a horrible character herself. Like, no, she is. That's the thing we also need to talk nobody, about. Nobody, nobody is like, like nobody is written well. No, everyone's a dick. Um, they're not even. They're not even archetypes. They are just. Everybody is just an the asshole. Bully, the bully you know and what? the victim are archetypes. I would argue. But they're not. An archetype has more depth than they would. They're not mm. archetypes. They're fucking caricatures. Okay, yeah. I would especially agree with that. With I, I thought the teacher characters were all right, but they were still characters. I mean, this was the teacher that frowns at everybody. And it's like, I kind of thought he was amusing. And I thought his death was amusing, too. But there's not a character there. He's a... Uh, He's a concept. Yeah. He's a concept much. given flesh. And I want to say also that though the characters suck in this and the finale sucks, there is still fun to be had in this movie. There are moments. I do. I I I like a lot that's in this. I would I would put this on why I'm doing something else and like watch the parts I like. Probably. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't add up to much as a whole, but there it's better are... than on friend it. <laughs> there are scenes though that work, and um, and I'm glad I'm grateful that it says final in the title. <laughs> Yeah, I am too. And I and like most of it, most of like the Battle Royale stuff, which like 20% sort of like all the scramble. If that was the movie, like if it stuck where it wasn't like, let's do this coma thing with that. If it was just simply like, oh no, all these kids have this curse happening. Mm-hmm. And then, and so we can just have, and just like go through them until we're just like down at the end. Mm-hmm. If it really just like narrowed in like that, that would have been yeah movie even, yeah. even if even if it was well first off if you cut out the acoma thing you'd cut out the chicken thing so we might actually get a good death from that bully but pretending that, saying that none of the arrest changes but the stuff that's in it like that is already still in it mm-hmm. like it would be fine if it missed some of them or came like subpar on some because like the rest of it would be good it's almost like it needed to be a less ambitious movie or at the very least, a less crowded one. You need it to be, yeah, I, I, actually, I think less ambitious is kind of interesting, which is, I think it's more fitting, and I think that's interesting that in the third one, it ambitions the problem. Yeah, because the second one, they, they don't have any. No, I mean, I, you know what, I, I actually, I, I disagree. I think the problem mm-hmm. is the second one, they have too much, and they don't do anything. I think, like, I think, like, they really wanted to sell that romance. Yeah, okay. It just didn't work. There's no chemistry. There's no scares. There's no... There's yeah. too many fucking sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's our movies. Uh, one missed call? Great. One missed call, too. Sucks, but hey, they're sleeveless. And one missed call, final. Uh, there's some good stuff. And then, the, then it ends with some bad stuff. And that's the trilogy. Isn't it interesting how we managed to jump the shark on episode two? How how, how do you mean? I mean, we we start with a great film, and by episode two, oh. everybody's like, "Oh, fucking shut up! These films suck." I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this was always going to be back and forth. Our next one, neither of us have seen, and the, the next episode, so uh, that's going to be interesting too. Uh, so there's going to be some ups and downs, you know. So we we decided that we're gonna start saying what we're gonna watch next episode. Right now we're building up episodes, so when 
this airs actually this will be coming out the same day the last one did even though it's some days apart in the recording uh yeah some some many days. but at some point we'll be hitting a place where you know we're not one for one but we're we're a little bit closer than we'll be right now mm-hmm. so like we'll we're gonna start telling you now but so um uh tell tell the next movie now yeah, what's okay. the next one? So, uh, next movie is Jun Fukuda's uh, sci-fi horror film from the early '60s, "The Secret of the Telegian. Um, it's a early, uh, well, not I guess not that early, but um, it's, I know it's nothing a, about this. Okay, so it's kind of uh, one of the I think the um, the direct translation of its Japanese title is something about the transparent man. And so it's kind of like okay. an invisible man sort of horror film, I think, if I recall. But um, it's 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 uh with special effects from A.G. Subaraya, who did a lot of the uh, Godzilla films and created Ultraman and stuff. So it's gonna oh, be nice. yeah. So it's gonna be um, you know, a classic okay. kind of oh, cool. sci-fi horror. You know, they they didn't they didn't make a whole lot, or at the very least, it's, they're not well known in the the West of their sort of um sci-fi horror on a more human scale but they didn't okay make so, it, so it never really gets into like toko territory no no this is not a kaiju movie and if it if it surprises me and it turns out to be something uh you know <laughs> You're gonna be very happy. i'll be happy but i will be surprised um so this is this is more on the along the lines of the human vapor H-Man and Matango as far as uh, Japanese horror films of the... I've only seen one of those. Matango is so good. Yeah, that's the one I've seen. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so so that's going to be the next one, and I know what we're going to be doing after that, but we'll save that for now. Sure. Do you have anything else to say about these these lovely films? Um, The Arrow Blu-ray trilogy... Uh, set is really good. It's packed with a lot of good stuff, and it's legitimately worth it for one missed call, like the first one alone. Yeah, no, it's a good set, and I do think that if you like these films, that you, or if you're curious about them after hearing us ramble, uh, that th- it's a it's a worthwhile buy. Um, and uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I do not feel, even though I did not like the sequel, well, I really did not like two. I like three well enough. I'm actually interested in learning more about 3 if there's anything on there. I also will add that I'm glad that the set has the sequels. I'm glad that we didn't just get the the first film on Blu-ray because, hey, why not? Uh...